Have you ever felt a bit lost when it comes to understanding your own blood sugar readings? Understanding your blood sugar levels is crucial whether you have diabetes, pre-diabetes or are simply trying to maintain overall health. After all, our blood sugar levels are a key indicator of how our body is processing the food we consume and can have a significant impact on our energy, mood and long-term well-being. Do watch till the end so you'll understand what are the normal blood sugar ranges for both non-diabetics and diabetics and some tips to manage blood sugar levels. And if you like this video, do give us the thumbs up and share it with your friends. Normal blood sugar ranges for non-diabetics Now, let's talk about the basics. We all have blood sugar levels that fluctuate throughout the day, right? But what exactly is considered a normal range for someone without diabetes? According to the American Diabetes Association, the target is to have a fasting blood sugar under 100 mg per dl and a blood sugar between 90 to 130 mg per dl one after after a meal. Pretty straightforward, right? But here's where it can get a bit more complex. Our blood sugar levels can be influenced by a variety of factors, including the foods we eat, our physical activity levels, stress, illness, and even our hormones. That means that the normal range can vary from person to person and even throughout the day for the same individual. For example, someone who is very active might have lower blood sugar levels, while someone who is dealing with a stressful situation might experience a temporary spike. And let's not forget about the role of insulin, the hormone responsible for regulating our blood sugar levels. When insulin isn't working properly, that's when we start to see issues like pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Understanding blood sugar ranges for pre-diabetes and diabetes. Speaking of which, what about those of us who have been told we have pre-diabetes or full-blown diabetes? Well, the goalposts shift a bit. For folks with pre-diabetes, the fasting blood sugar range is 100 to 125 mg per dl and the 2-hour post-meal reading can be 140 to 199 mg per dl. And for those with diabetes, fasting blood sugar over 126 mg per dl or a 2-hour post-meal reading over 200 mg per dl is the new normal. Do you know what your A1C level is? This measures your average blood sugar over the past 2-3 to three months and it's a crucial indicator of how well you're managing your diabetes or pre-diabetes. For non-diabetics, the target is under 5.7%, but for those with diabetes, the goal is usually between 6.5 to 7%. If you suspect you are pre-diabetic, do check out my other video on the 10 pre-diabetes symptoms in the link above and in the description down below to find out more. Diving deeper into blood sugar ranges One of the most important things to understand about blood sugar levels is that they're not just a single number, but rather a range that can fluctuate throughout the day. This is true for both people with and without diabetes. For those without diabetes, the American Diabetes Association recommends a fasting blood sugar, meaning you haven't eaten in at least 8 hours, of less than 100 mg per dl. After a meal, their blood sugar should be between 90 to 130 mg per dl. And if you test your blood sugar 2 hours after a meal, the target is between 90 to 110 mg per dl. Now, let's talk about those with pre-diabetes. This is the stage before a full-blown diabetes diagnosis where your blood sugar levels are starting to creep up but haven't yet reached the diabetes threshold. For those with pre-diabetes, the fasting blood sugar range is 100 to 125 mg per dl and the 2-hour post-meal reading can be 140 to 199 mg per dl. And finally, for those with diabetes, the fasting blood sugar target is typically under 130 mg per dl and the 2-hour post-meal reading should be under 180 mg per dl. Of course, these goals can vary depending on the individual, their age, the type of diabetes they have, and any other health conditions they may be managing. Factors that influence blood sugar levels One thing that's really important to understand is that these blood sugar ranges aren't set in stone. They can be influenced by a variety of factors, including the type of food you eat, your physical activity levels, your stress levels, and even your medications. The importance of self-monitoring Checking your blood sugar levels at home, either through a finger prick or a continuous glucose monitor CGM, can give you a much more detailed picture of how your body is responding to different factors throughout the day. This can help you identify patterns, pinpoint problem areas, and make more informed decisions about your diet, exercise, and medication. 
For example, let's say you notice that your blood sugar tends to spike after eating a certain type of carb-heavy meal. Armed with that knowledge, you can work with your healthcare team to adjust your portions, choose different food options, or even time your insulin dosage differently to better manage that spike. Understanding the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It's important to also understand the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. They have some key differences when it comes to blood sugar management. With type 1 diabetes, the body is unable to produce insulin, the hormone responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. This means that people with type 1 diabetes must take insulin, either through injections or an insulin pump to keep their blood sugar in check. The target blood sugar ranges for someone with type 1 diabetes are generally a bit tighter than for those with type 2 diabetes, as even small fluctuations can have more immediate and serious consequences. Maintaining consistently healthy blood sugar levels is crucial for preventing the long-term complications associated with type 1 diabetes. On the other hand, type 2 diabetes is often characterized by insulin resistance where the body doesn't use insulin as effectively as it should. In these cases, the body may still be producing insulin but it's not enough to keep blood sugar levels in the normal range. Management of type 2 diabetes often involves a combination of lifestyle changes such as diet and exercise, as well as oral medications or insulin. The blood sugar targets for those with type 2 diabetes may be slightly more flexible depending on an individual's age, overall health, and other factors. Regardless of the type of diabetes, the goal is to keep blood sugar levels as close to normal as possible while also avoiding the risk of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, and other potential complications. Resources and support for managing blood sugar levels. Now, I know all of this information can feel a bit overwhelming, but the good news is that there are plenty of resources and support systems available to help you navigate this journey. One of the best places to start is by building a strong relationship with your healthcare team. They are the experts who can provide personalized guidance and support based on your unique needs and circumstances. Don't be afraid to ask questions, express your concerns, and work collaboratively to find the right approach for you. You may also wish to check out my other video on how to lower blood sugar levels with these 10 incredible superfoods in the link above and in the description down below. And don't forget about the power of physical activity. Regular exercise can be a game changer when it comes to managing your blood sugar levels, whether you have diabetes, prediabetes, or are simply looking to maintain overall health. What's the one thing you're most curious about or struggling with when it comes to your blood sugar levels? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, do like and share this video so that more people will know if their blood sugar level is within healthy range. Check out this playlist of my top 10 videos of health tips for women and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.